Hey folks, this is Jeff again with SimSamurai.net. Uh, this is part three of how to hook everything up uh, and my uh, you know, in-depth tutorial on how I do what I do. Uh, basically, you're looking at my four, four GoFlight units from a company called GoFlight. This is the GF-166A and another GF-166A. This is their newer model. This is their older model. Um, they both work great. Um, this is their GFP8 uh, multifunction button controller. I use this as an audio selector panel, much like you'd see in, a, in an aircraft. Um, and the GFT8, which is toggle switches uh, for things like uh, you know, your auto feather, your prop sync, pitot heat, de-ice, battery master, avionics, stuff like that. But basically, I have all four of these units into one collated cord. Um, each one of these has its own USB cord um, that I've kind of wound into one cord that then plugs into some of my uh, USB hubs. Um, here you're looking at my uh, throttle quadrant from CH Products. This is a flap switch out of Real Piper Seminole that I made myself. My speed brake lever again uh, which I've made myself and my trim wheel which I've made myself and all three of these one two and three go into a desktop aviator 2090 board which has a single uh, USB output so all three of those units are on its own USB card um, and has its own little configurator uh, that plugs in to your motherboard um, or basically a USB hub which I'm about to do now and so basically I just wanted to go over how all this stuff plugs in so actually you know just on this throttle quadrant alone you're looking at like eight devices you got your mouse which is one uh, these units which is four so that's five and then six and then uh, seven eight and actually nine but uh, you know fortunately enough this this and the trim wheels are on its own and then you've got uh, oh I guess I forgot my little keypad unit which is uh, used for autopilot control um, and so that also is its own, a USB device so basically, let's go under the hood here and take a quick look at uh, how I plug all this stuff in, move my keyboard out of the way, and where I plug everything else in. Um, you can see my rudder pedals right here. And I'm going to lay down on the floor. And uh, actually, it's so dark under there, I'm going to grab my flashlight, something really good to always have. And of course, I'm always missing it and wondering where it is. Always keep it within close distance. Uh, this is a flashlight, LED flashlight made by a company called Blue Max, and I got this actually at uh, God, where did I get this? At Costco. Came in a three pack, I think, for about 15 bucks, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate having this because uh, I've got one in my garage, one in my kitchen, and one in my flight station, and uh, they're really great to have. They've got two settings. Um, uh, you know half beam full beam and they're just really really handy to have around they do a great job and uh, after I've got them I don't know how I ever lived without them so let's go underneath the hood here and so as my left shoulder is sitting my rudder pedals here let's take a look that's actually looking inside my computer case with some holes that I've made that are eventually going to have radiators in them uh, for liquid cooling but basically what you're looking at up top here right there to shine the flashlight on it is my uh, power strip and crazy enough I have my power strip mounted on the bottom top of my center uh, crib here because of the fact that I hate things like dust and dust bunnies and so I found a power strip that's got a wall mount system most power strips do and so I inverted it and mounted it up top like that uh, you would think that maybe the plugs would fall out but I found one that really grips the teeth of your cords really nicely so that they don't fall out and so on the back side what you're looking at is the uh, power converters for my three units of my USB device uh, hubs and then in the center uh, would be 
my uh, you know power plug for my power supply my power plug for my LED lights that run around my cockpit um, a plug for my little external amp that my audio output from my motherboard plugs into and then on the back side it's got three plugs or four plugs where I plug in all my actual monitors to my LCD monitors and uh, so I've actually uh, made full use of that I've got every plug in use on that power strip um, but again it's inverted to help keep the dust out and I've collated uh, a lot of my cords to uh, try and keep things nice and organized under here try and keep them off the floor of my uh, sim cockpit and what you're looking at there with my little green lights is one of my D-Link uh, USB power uh, hubs powered hubs same thing right here so I got one on each side and I mounted those to my vertical supports on my sim station with uh, velcro uh, you can find inch and a half wide velcro at places like uh, you know any hardware supply store or Home Depot etc for a couple bucks and then you can just cut it to length as you need it um, and then mount it uh, you know thank God for NASA and this and the space program for providing us with things like velcro because uh, you know in flight simulation it really comes in handy and as you can see I've made good use of it so I've got a USB hub on each side you can see four lights on each side so that's meaning uh, you know four ports on each side and so on this side just as I was talking about a moment ago my go flight units my avionics are going to plug in to these four ports over here and then on this hub right here um, I'm going to plug in the stuff um, that's remaining on my throttle quadrant mainly uh, my USB device from desktop aviator the 2090 board my little autopilot keypad unit um, and stuff like that um, so that's about it um, this is basically the the inner working and the guts and the underside of my flight simulator this is kind of where the rubber meets the road um, as far as cords go um, again you know it can be a lot to look at and a lot to decipher but if you just lay it out on paper make kind of your own schematic of what you need and how many ports you need and how many USB devices you're going to have and and what kind of uh, you know surge protector you need with how many ports it's going to need um, you can figure it all out but as you can see it's uh, pretty organized I know it looks like spaghetti but that's just the way it is so obviously the more that you can organize yourself and either use zip ties or little velcro ties to keep your cords nice and neat and organized the better um, again I use one whole strip on the back side for my USB hubs the center hubs are, are my main peripherals I always try and keep my main uh, cord for my computers power supply as close to the power that's coming in from the surge protector um, I, I don't know you know if that really helps or matters but uh, you know considering that's a 1200 watt power supply for my computer I like to keep it as close to the main power uh, coming in on on the uh, surge protector power supply so uh, hopefully that makes sense and then same thing uh, with all my monitors I like to keep them on the opposite row um, and, and, and that side is actually an always on side so even if I turn the surge protector off um, it does have a row of four plugs that stay always on and so I just plug my LCD monitors into that row um, so I hope that uh, makes sense uh, and hopefully we've made some some progress and sense of all the madness that is building your own flight simulator and uh, crazy enough this is actually the most cost-effective way that it can be done um, you know when you get into even more advanced flight simulation and step up into even a more professional environment than this it gets even much crazier than this is uh, with even more wires and cords and controllers and such so the reality is that this is actually the most cost-effective most simplest way that you can do this so thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, uh, stay tuned for more videos from SimSamurai.net 
and uh, we'll see you in the virtual skies really soon. Thanks. See you again. Bye.